All right, and with that, it looks like the run is start getting ready to get started, so we will pass it on to Plywood and his couch, Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes. Thank you. Hi, folks. My name's Plywood, and I will be running Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes, released exclusively for Nintendo GameCube. On the couch, I will let you guys introduce yourselves. Hi, everybody. I'm Daily May. Nice to meet you. Hi, Carcinogen SDA. Hi, PD Precious Roy. And on our ends, Draco Dan and Metal Glenn Solid. And so let's get this party rolling in three, two, one, go. So this is the 2004 remake of Metal Gear Solid, released on the PlayStation, which is actually having its 20th anniversary in September. So what better way to celebrate that than play not that game, but the remake? And so we're going to be going for a big boss rank on extreme difficulty. And the main qualifiers for that are I can't get spotted because I have to have Game Over if discovered on. So if a guard ever spots me or a surveillance camera, that's it, game over, and I'm not a big boss anymore. I can't kill anyone, and I can use at max one ration, which is the healing item in the game. And that's pretty much the basics of big boss rank. Um, we're going to be uh, getting nice and cozy in this locker as we wait for an elevator to show up. So I'm just going to take some selfies. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for a few donations. Perfect. Uh, the first donation we have, $25 donation from Farkinator, which says, good luck, Plywood. Thanks, Farkinator. We also have a, another donation here, another $25 donation from Sean B. First time donating for the week, more to come later, I'm sure. I love watching, or rather being distracted by GDQ, and I finally have a job so I can afford to be generous. I don't know what Pepsi Man is, but more games is always a plus to me. We have time for like two more. Maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a $10 donation from the Beastman. Twin Snacks for the win. Announcer, please say, kept you waiting, huh? At the start of the run. Kill and save Meryl at the same time. <laughs> so we're at the helipad, which is like the first kind of complicated part of this game. Going to make that guard spot us in the distance and bait him over so he won't spot us. Uh, the guards in this game kind of have a tunnel vision issue. And we're going to hop in here, pick up these stun grenades, and make sure not to get spotted by this camera. And then again, exploiting tunnel vision, make this guy see something in the distance, and ghost right past him. And you're going to see me rapidly swapping here with the weapon. Um, this game runs on the Metal Gear Solid 2 engine, so uh, various things from that game carry over to this game. They're kind of like sister games. And if you mash a weapon while you're crawling, you actually increase your speed. So for about 10 seconds of mashing, you save about a second. And the nice thing about this is that it actually makes the guard pattern in the tank hanger a little bit more bearable. I don't actually have to mash the whole way, because I'll have to wait anyways for a guard to go by. But uh, if you ever learn this game, get ready to uh, do a lot of this. <laughs> And everyone has a different way of mashing the right trigger. Uh, there's, a, there's a guy in the community who actually uses his nose, or used to use his nose. You know, there's always some way. If there's a will, there's a way to mash. So we're going to go to this tank and uh, hang on the wall right here. 
and wait for this guy to go by. Make sure not to disturb anything and roll right through him. And he's going to be starting to realize, he's going to be smart, realize something's wrong. I'm under attack. Stay alert. <laughs> but we're already out of here. And right here, we're just going to be doing some more running to our first destination, the uh, cell where the DARPA chief is. So we have some time for some more donations if you have them. Perfect. I do. As a matter of fact, I have a $100 donation from PD Precious Roy, which says, Yo, Plywood, all the hard work is paying off. Bring it home and make it a TTS anniversary to remember. This donation goes towards killing Merrill. Thanks, man. We My pleasure. <laughs> we also have a $20 donation from Blue Metal, which says, Hey, Plywood, good luck on the run from myself and the guys at MGSR. May the tank cooperate, may Sniper Wolf not hug many trees and save <laughs> Otacon because he's our bro. Hashtag TTS face. Thanks, Blue. And like time for one more. Perfect. We have a $5 donation from Jay the Boss. Metal Gear Hype? Hype. 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 First time watching SGDQ and first time donating. Good luck to Plywood for a great run. And also, don't forget, it's just a box. <laughs> just a box. So we're coming into the guard encounter. We're going to be using this M9. It's a tranquilizing gun, but we only have 16 bullets. Uh, Every time I miss a shot during this run, I'm going to donate $10, and Glenn over here is keeping track of that. So let's hope I don't miss too many, or maybe we should. I'm not sure. So just lock yourself onto these guards. They try to, try to dodge left and right, but I'm already ready for what they're going to do. I know what they're going to do. I'm in their heads. And if you've never seen this game before, but have seen the original, you're going to notice the voice acting is a little bit different. Uh, that's because they had to re-record the voices for this game due to bad audio quality in the original. They didn't actually record those voice lines in a studio, strangely enough, so they had to re-record them. And David Hayter, the voice of Solid Snake, actually took a pay cut so that the vast majority of the original voice actors could come back to this game, which is uh, really nice of David. Shout-outs to David Hayter. And we just trank these guards who are outside, ready for them to come in and uh, pick up some SOCOM ammo along the way. I actually emptied out a SOCOM magazine, and that's for a backup strat uh, when we get to the tank, which is by far one of the hardest fights in this game, and it happens 10 minutes into the run. And let Merrill take this guy out. Remember, a big boss lets other people kill for him, not himself. And we got time for a few donations, like two. Perfect. We have a donation, or a $5 donation from Maho Shouju. Hey, Plywood, I can't watch you live, but I'm looking forward to watching the VOD later. Everyone from the Mad Father community is cheering you on, so kick this game's butt. Thank you, Maho. And we also have a $10 donation, Private Plank reporting for duty. <laughs> Happy to see Plywood, Daily May, and the rest of the couch for Metal Gear Solid. We are all watching at home and wish the best of luck, buddy. Please put this donation to Runner's Choice. That is saving Jock and Deus Ex because a bomb is very important to see. A bomb. Um, time for like one more. We have a $15 donation from PMP Reach. Hey, Daily May and Plywood, IRL friend Alex here. It's oh awesome to see people I know be a part of this marathon. Who would have known it would be also be running a game from my childhood series? Good luck and donation goes to Killing Merrill. It's still canon, right? Hashtag TTS face. Thank you, Alex. I miss you, dude. So time for a very exciting boss fight. Shoot this old man in the face. A few times. 
right, that's one missed shot. That's one missed shot. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little bit different from the original game because first person view kind of makes that fight broken. But that's OK, because in a couple minutes, I'm going to have to play a very precise game of basketball with a tank. Um, just a typical day for me. Um, this upcoming fight, you have to think about a few variables, the tank's movement, your movement, how you're cooking the grenades. It's a real hassle. And during that fight, I'm going to let the couch take over because um, the inputs have to be pretty precise to get what I need to do. <sighs> I really wanted the 15, guys. I'm serious. I wanted that 15. But it, it, there's a kind of a strategy there. Uh, once I see the 20s, I kind of let go after like half a second. I did get a 15 earlier in the practice room, which did curse this. Oh, well. Lost like a couple seconds. Who cares, man? It's all right. It's just a Kodak call. And these guys are going to notice us, but that's no big deal. P.S. to people who are wondering why there's no radar. You actually don't need to have radar off for... That's the wrong floor. Uh, you don't have to have radar off for um, Big Boss, but it does save a few seconds at the helipad. We're just visiting the holding cells for fun. There we go. I just love elevators, guys. If you run Metal Gear, you know that elevators are a lot of fun. So right here, we're going to roll through some lasers like a boss and get past the lasers and then shoot a few sensors so that we can safely get across. Again, mashing to speed ourselves up and shoot the three sensors, roll in. The roll animation is faster, except for the recovery animation. So you kind of want to do that in like load zones and cutscene triggers, that kind of thing. And now I'm going to be quiet and try to play basketball. All right, so he's uh, grabbing two claymores on the battlefield and uh, has a leftover C4, opening the fight using a chaff grenade. Crawl for a sec. Do the uh, weapon swap trick. Jeff Grenade goes off. Walk up to the tank treads. We want those lap throws. Once you see that little cutscene, that means we're we're on point. Right, the lap th the lap throws. Once you see the cutscene, it takes off a fourth of his meter, as opposed to. Was it a fourth or a third? It's a third. Okay. If you get the lap, yeah. Right. And I'm aiming to throw around the part of the barrel where it goes fat from skinny. That's where you want to throw roughly a circle around the tank. But because the tank is moving, it kind of makes it a little bit complicated uh, to do those throws. But it looks like we're going to get through gunner one without too much trouble. Hopefully get this throw. Nice. See how you like this. See how you like this. There you go. <laughs> Just get lined up. Come on. Right on the edge. Ah. This, is, this is the fun of this fight. It's just so precise that you kind of run into issues like this where it's just on the edge, but you're not going to get it. Oh. Right on the edge again. So yep. now we're going to do a fun backup. We're going to throw magazines in the tank because if we land this, which we did, and I do a headshot on this guy, that counts as a full stun grenade lap throw. Uh, this fight wasn't really programmed all that well. Uh, we recently discovered that, and it made the fight a little bit easier. Now coming into, thank you. The only skip of this game, we're going to phase through a door. Is there somebody there? By moving in the opposite direction while rapidly swapping the uh, chaff grenade, we actually get pushed through the door. And this does two things. One, we skip a codec call. That's about five or six seconds long. And the guard patterns are easier to deal with. So good stuff all around. The uh, trigger for that codec is only when you're prone. So if you get through a different way, you're fine. Uh, again, that's a uh, leftover from the Metal Gear Solid 2 engine. And we have time for a couple donations. 
Perfect. We have a $5 donation from Maniac Bob. We have to save Meryl. She is a wonder, an impeccable human being, a national treasure, and a massively awarded and multi-talented actress. Wait, <laughs> we are talking about Meryl Streep, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Boom! Yeah, the uh, Nikita, you want to be very careful here to not hit the walls. And once you turn the corner, let the missile fly. If not, the missile could easily get shot down by the turrets. And just so we're clear, uh, when a turret spots me, that doesn't count as like a surveillance camera spotting me. It's like a like a robot. So just just to be clear there, there's no no issue there with the uh, alerts. Coming up into the ninja fight, which has seen a lot of revisions over the last few months. We uh, recently discovered, with the help of a few community members, Furry2 primarily, shout outs to Furry2, that you could keep the ninja in the first phase of the fight. And I'll let the couch explain that while I do this fight. Absolutely. What we're gonna look for here is punch, punch, Nikita swing, followed by a shot from the Nikita. The ninja expects you to do punch, punch, kick, punch, punch, kick, and then go into the next phase. The Nikita hit resets that counter so that we can continue to do damage against him. Yeah, and I need to do enough combos uh, to finish him off in the next phase because you can't actually finish this fight in phase one, unfortunately. And it's really nice, this uh, method, because he compliments us, and it makes me feel good about myself. So, uh... As far as the uh, Nikita hit, so you, if you equip the Nikita while you're kicking, like in the punch-punch-kick combo, that actually causes the full damage as if you were just swinging the Nikita, correct? Exactly. And we have to make sure that we're close enough to him to do that uh, kick. If you're too close, you'll actually bump into him and he'll counterattack. If you're too far away, you'll miss the kick. Um, so there's a little bit of precision there. And it's really important, by the way, that you have previous on when you swap your weapon, not unequip. That is like super key for this run. And that's Ninja. <laughs> yeah, I can't emphasize enough how big of a change that discovery was because the fight used to have frame perfect attacks for the fastest strat and I was never really good at them. So when things got easier, I gave the okay hand. <laughs> um, we have time for some donations during this uh, cutscene stream here. Perfect. I have a $150 donation from Sniper Bano 149 Sniper. Gotta show some support to Plywood during my favorite childhood game, putting this towards saving Meryl, even though it's going to kill Plywood's mashing, mashing finger. Good luck to all the runners. Just for you, Sniper, that's totally okay. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, uh, we can read a few more. We have a $50 donation from Pythonicus. Supporting MSF and watching a Metal Gear run? Count me in. Sorry, buddy, but we absolutely have to save your best bay, Otacon. <laughs> <laughs> Keep killing it up there and bless RNG for lottery roll. The entire MGSR community has got your back. Shout outs to my boys, Roy and Glenn, on the couch. Hashtag TTS face. So coming up into B1 here, we're going to knock on a wall to alert Meryl so she can go into the ladies' restroom because she needs to get changed. Huh? Give a little peek. Oh. It's too fast. Uh, one of the nice differences with this game compared to the original is that a lot of the unskippable cutscenes of the original are turned into skippable cutscenes, which really streamlines this game as far as the run is concerned. And we're coming up into the Mantis fight, um, one of the more precise fights in this game because um, you can shoot in first person in this game. The issue is on extreme, you have about half a second to shoot in first person, half a second or so. Um, which means you have to be 
really twitchy and know how to aim. There's two weak points for Mantis, his right leg and his head. And the way this is going to work, I'm going to be setting up my damage in a specific way so that I can skip the first time Meryl tries to shoot at me, the first Meryl uh, possession. And that's thanks to a happy coincidence from Roy, actually. So thanks, Roy. Yep. So what we're going to do coming into this fight <laughs> is line up the shot initially, switch controllers, because you have to be on port four. Shoot. Punch. Punch. Third punch, perfect. He gets the shot on the run by. Line up on the door and take that right leg. Shooting him in the right leg does exactly as much damage as shooting him in the head. Correct. No random dialogue. He can give you a random line there and waste your time because he's very inquisitive, doesn't know how to read. Someone get this man hooked on phonics. And down she goes. Yep. So we're going to do a tiptoe shot here by holding left trigger, right trigger, and get this guy right in his bald head. Just like that. No extra dialogue again. That's really nice of you, man. Thanks for not talking to me. Right leg. Skip the Psycho Blast and right leg again, and we're good. Good fight. Really good fight. That's Twin Snakes in action. Yeah, that's when things go really well. When things don't go well in that fight, he's going to be teleporting around the, around the room and wasting your time, and it's just a bad scene. So making the fight go in our favor and controlling it, it's like a scripted fight, and going off script can be very dangerous to both your time and your life. And another thing that's dangerous to my time in life are these dogs. Mm -hmm. um, these are pretty much the worst dogs in Metal Gear, period. Uh, their animations are ridiculous. They have complete priority over you if they jump at you. And they do more damage than the upcoming boss. I don't know why. And uh, apologies, I'm going to have to shoot Meryl here because she's about to tease us and I don't want to listen to that. Snake, and what's wrong? I thought you were good with dogs. Yeah. Not these dogs. These dogs are ridiculous. <laughs> Seriously, if you get to see the full animation of them dive bombing you, it's like they're a spiral football. It's ridiculous. By the way, for the uh, donation incentive, we're coming up to the cutoff point. So if anyone wants to snipe Meryl saving or killing her, it'll be on the final shot against Wolf 1, the next boss. Speaking of the donation incentive, currently Save Merrill is in the lead with $11,341.96. Kill Merrill trailing behind with $9,853.55. Oh boy. Oh dear indeed. There it is. Please. I have no food! Okay. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, they can actually get you stuck right at that little um, overhang, and at that point, you need to punch, punch, kick them to get off of them. So for people familiar with the original game, normally you would have to backtrack all the way back to the nuclear command building, or excuse me, to the um, armory. In TTS, you have the PSG-1T, which is right here. So no more backtracking, or just a little. Yeah, just a little tiny bit. It's also pretty great that you do not have to equip key cards to go through the level oh, whatever yeah. doors. That is true. Yeah. A lot of little quality of light changes, and it's really nice not having to backtrack that much because that's one of the harder segments in the original game. I do run the original, um, and there are some similarities as far as the run's concerned, but that right there, that difference, makes the beginning of this game a lot more fun. And so we're going to do one more repeat, repeat trip through the caves, but this time we're going to pick up some PSG-1T ammo um, because I'm sure MSF would like me to miss more shots, so pick up more ammo, right? 
How, what, what's our count at right now, by the way? The save Meryl, kill Meryl count? No, uh, the, the missed shots. Four. 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 All right, 40 bucks. I'm gonna splash that pot. All right, roll into the door, right past the pup, and time for one of the random fights in this game, Wolf 1. Let someone else explain this while I oh, try nice not to. Oh, nice spawn. Yeah, it's a nice spawn. You want to aim below the rail? Yes, yes, this is what I want you to do. Just just take it. Don't go to, don't, <laughs> no, no, no. That's where I don't want you to be. Sniper just likes to hide. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay, okay, all right, we're good. No, lady, please. <laughs> no, okay. Get the head. That, that's fine. There you go. We're, we're good. <laughs> you could have probably tagged her with a body shot that last shot, actually, couldn't you? I could have, I could have. But man, in the moment, we have to get going. And now's the time. What's the results? Are we gonna save Meryl or kill her? You are going to be saving Meryl. All right. <laughs> well, considering I didn't save her at AGDQ, I, I guess this is fitting that I save her here. Um, the mashing actually isn't that bad in Twin Snakes. Um, the only issue is, and this has happened to a few people, you don't want to mash too hard because the auto-fire detection in this game could think that you're mashing way too fast. Uh, Shout-outs to my boy Tyler, who had that happen to him because he mashes too fast. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. He got that, uh, got that 15 hertz on lock. <laughs> and nice little trick. After the electricity is done surging through your body, you can keep on mashing to regain your health. We're just going to have to do another session of torture after this to save Meryl. It adds a, a couple minutes to the run to save Meryl over killing her. Uh, we have time for a few donations. Perfect. I have a, or a $20 donation <laughs> from Iggy Zig. Plywood, turn the game console off right now. The mission is a failure. <laughs> Cut the power right now. You'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. <laughs> Shut up, Dad. Jeez. We have a $50 donation from Axel White. Even though I'm at work, I had to watch this run. Maybe if I put a box or a desk in a cardboard box, my boss won't notice. Good luck, Plywood. Hey. Hey. This, this is our hey, friend hey. Johnny, the very polite guard. Uh, hey, hey. We're trying to cur uh, cure his common cold by knocking at predetermined points. Shut up in there, will you? And he might yell at us a little bit, but we're giving him a favor Shut up because there, knocking is actually a little bit faster Shut up in there, will you? and having that voice hey. line happen hey. uh, than him sneezing. Hey. 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 Shut up in there, will you? 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 Hey, 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 Snake, it's showtime. Woo! Awesome. <laughs> Woo! Thanks, guys. <laughs> For those of you that played along, you're now honorary Metal Gear speedrunners. Yes. We, we love Johnny, and Johnny loves us. Fun fact, you actually cannot kill Johnny in this game, because Johnny is so important in the Metal Gear plot that he cannot die. Uh, we have some time for donations. We're just going through torture. <laughs> I was going to say perfect, but now I'm a little bit that's, that's not exactly perfect. <laughs> okay, we have a $20 donation from actually me. Snake, there's something I've got to ask you. It's why I followed you up this far. <laughs> Do you think donations can bloom, even on the battlefield? Money goes oh. to getting that prizeman any percent with cutscenes run in. Meryl is now saved. 
And I will not forget to throw the time bomb. Because Ocelot's not happy that we went through his very weak torture, so he puts a bomb in our inventory. Yeah, side note, did we just break 600K? Oh my god, that we did. All right. Shouts to everyone who's donated for such a wonderful cause. Absolutely. Time for some donations. We have a $10 donation from Scython83. Ply with my boy, <laughs> do the thing. And the box is always your friend. Shout out to my boy, PD Precious Roy. And remember, nail. <laughs> nail. <laughs> We have a $25 donation from Solid Wanderer. Have to donate during this odd remake of one of my favorite <laughs> games ever. Good luck on the run, Plywood, and let's not worry too much about Meryl and skip the button mashing. <laughs> Get me out of here! Get me out of here! Hey, I'm here. Where? 180 roll. Bam. Uh, we're going to pretend to be a french fry to get out of this uh, torture cell. And the way you want to do this is just bathe yourself in ketchup and trick your friend Johnny into thinking that you are a french fry. He's really hungry. He wants some good food. <laughs> it's very important here to stand up after you hear the click, after you hear the door click. What the hell? Run right through him. Give him a give him a little love choke. One love choke, and he's down for the count. All right, and get this out. I don't want it. <laughs> Rather not. Thank you very much. And the only thing to really note about this section coming up is the canyon's a little bit different in this game compared to the original. When you go through this area in Twin Snakes, there's going to be guards and some surveillance cameras. In the original, it's claymores and some turrets. So it's a little bit different. We're just going to be trinking some guards and then running on through, doing the door glitch again, and getting our way back to the communication tower. So we got time for donations. We have a $10 donation from RPD234. Hey, shut up in there, will ya? <laughs> we have a $100 donation from Bobby B, which is also, hey, shut up in there, will ya? <laughs> <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Infamous Cheeky. Yo, good Cheeky. Luck, <laughs> good luck to Plywood on this run, and big shout out to the entire MGSR community. Also, thanks to everyone at SGDQ and everyone watching for the effort towards such a great cause. It's a normal day for me. Is there somebody there? Huh? What was that just now? Huh? What's huh? Huh? Rolling upstairs is a little bit faster than climbing up them. Same with rolling downstairs, as long as you don't roll into your face. If you have some donations, let her rip. Perfect. I absolutely do. I have a $100 donation from Rob Job Ring. Do you think love can bloom even at a speedrunning marathon where you speedrun Nido Games starring Solid Snake, who's even cooler than Goofy combined with Guybrush? Three foot, who's played Metal Gear Solid at the same time that Plywood is? Well done. Back through the caves again. Of course, this time we have the handkerchief, so the dogs leave us alone, thankfully. And they love, now they love us. They Aww. love us. It's so awesome. Even the puppy. Aww. 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 And we're coming up actually on the disc swap in this game, a very important part of the run, actually. 
in this game, the disk swap is about halfway through the run. Uh, whereas in the original game, it's when you get to the end game. And uh, there is tech for disk swap, believe it or not. Um, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to hold the disk in my left hand. And keep in mind that the timer in the game is still tracking this, so you do want to do this fast. Um, hold my left hand, and you got to open up the tray as early as possible, but not too early, or else you'll get a disk read error. And uh, it's a really nice thing to have small hands for these small disks, FYI. I'm not ashamed of my small hands, OK? The feels win sausage fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's not so good for this game. Get out of there. OK. There we go. Not, not my, my uh, personal best for disk swap, but not that bad, given the jitters. <laughs> Yo, he beat the disk boss. <laughs> disk boss done. Cook a grenade. And this tower climb is a little bit spooky at the start. I'm going to be doing the first stun grenade throw. When I get to the flat floor is, no, thank you, uh, is really important because it's going to be stunning two guards. If I don't stun those guards, I'm going to have to uh, throw stun grenades behind me because guards will start chomping at my heels. And these guys love to snipe you with FAMASs. I don't know why. They're actually better snipers than Sniper Wolf. It's really weird. And just trank these guys as you climb up. Here's the hard one. Hug the wall. Throw at the middle from the wall. Trank these guys. This guy's out. That is how you want to do it. And hold the grenade, or the grenade, the M9, as we climb up. It's OK if these guys shoot us. We will be getting our health back momentarily. Again, holding the M9 up with B and A. Cook at 16, and throw at 18. <laughs> that, you know, that, that works. That works. And one more set of throws. We're going to cook once we get past the column on 23. Cook, and then throw at 25. Then immediately start cooking another one to cover our tracks. Hey, don't do that. All right, good climb. Fantastic. Well done. That one's smooth. Now we're going to be doing the repel section. Uh, fun fact, you can actually do this repel without the rope in this game by just dropping down from the pipes. Unfortunately, it is slower. But uh, you do have the option if you'd like to. Actually, I did not know that. I would have thought that would have resulted in a game over. Yeah, you can just press Y right here and <laughs> drop down. And there's uh, pipes, and so you have to like go along the pipe, drop down, and pick up the pipes. Uh, they're the big, thick pipes that are coming out of the wall. Neat little option. So two jumps down, then pressing B to get on the girder to walk. Wait for the steam to pass. Colonel's going to explain repelling. I'm going to explain it even better with a glitch, as long as it happens. Don't shoot me. Thank you, brother. And. Nothing, nothing. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's the girder glitch. You just kind of zip down if you do nothing right there. And we're going to trank these three guards like so. Pick up our chaff grenades. It's important that we move quickly here because if you don't, when the helicopter comes up, that'll be an unskippable cutscene. For some reason, they swap the stinger location and the ammo location between the games, and I guess that's just to annoy people like me, like nerds. Um, I wish they didn't do that, but you know, they just want to do something a little bit different. And uh, while we're doing some Stairmaster, uh, we have some time for some donations. Absolutely. We have a $10 donation from Starwind. Hey, Plywood. Fellow Metal Gear 
speedrun star win. Oh my goodness. The fellow it's no, okay. <laughs> speedrunner star win here. Good luck on your run. I know you'll kill it. We're in the Discord cheering you on. Say that five times fast, right? <laughs> Good job, Starwind. You hacked the announcer. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a $25 donation from Peregrine23. Plywood. Good runner. Good building material. <laughs> we also have a $15 donation from Johnny Sasuke. Hey. 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 What's up? Hey. How you doing? Good old Johnny Saki. And uh, while we continue up the stairs, there is also a $70 donation from Gene Freak. This event is so awesome that it's more than I can take. Good luck with the <laughs> Twin Snakes run. Thank you. All right, now that we're near the top of the tower, um, we're getting into one of the scarier fights in the run. Uh, if there's a place where I'm likely to use the rash and it's here, the hind fight, and can I get a little bit more game audio for this, um, can be a real nuisance since I don't have the radar on. Uh, I'm going to be relying on audio cues during the second phase to make sure I know where he's flying. He can fly very erratically and super aggressively. We want aggression, but we don't want to get shot with the aggression, if you get what I'm saying. Um, the first phase is fairly predictable, but it's still is kind of a nuisance because we're going to take some damage along the way. Um, and I'll let the couch explain a little bit more while I get going here. Just starting out the first phase is fairly predictable. There's a couple of patterns you can get, but mostly you're just going to be looking for those reticles, locking on and firing. <laughs> that little thing! Shoutouts to Cam Clark. The real trouble comes when you enter the second phase. Really? Not there yet, but the hind has the potential to play aggressive or safe. What we really are hoping for is that it's going to stay above deck the majority of the time so that plywood can just lay damage onto it. It's like the auto lock did not work. Come on, man. There we go. You can get shot here, so you do want to hide and get a cheap shot in while he flies to throw the missile. Stand right there. It's the best spot to stand on the roof. And here's the start of phase two. We'll try to do as much damage at the start as possible, but he flies super erratically. You just have to try to track him. And serious time. Watch the boxes. Try to hit the, the front the nose of the chopper, a huge noise wall that you have to listen through. Missing shots here is really dangerous because there's a chance he'll start flying away and that is a really dangerous situation. The hind can destroy you very quickly. This is slow. He can sometimes be aggressive and a little bit more slow by panning around the roof. Oh boy. Just one more. That's the hind. And you, need to, you didn't use a ration. No ration. No ration. That's awesome. Good job, man. Oh, by the way, you can stand behind that box in the original. Don't do that in this game, you will die. All right, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Maybe I can even say I'm doing pretty good. I don't want to go too far yet. We still have a little bit of run to go. Yes, please. Thank you. And as we descend back down the tower, I'm going to be uh, cooking and throwing grenades. And I'll explain the method in a moment. Uh, this, moment this method saves a little bit of time, but if I mess up the throw, it's not a big deal because there's a backup. So starting at 25, uh, and that's the little number you see, uh, I'm going to cook right before the number and throw on the first step of the next flight, like so. 
and it should blow up the turrets like that. And then every four floors down from 25, so 21, 17, 13, we'll do the same process again. And we have time for some donations while I do that. We have a $10 donation from Crossu. Hi, Plywood. So far, it's been a very solid run. And <laughs> <laughs> greetings from Poland. We also have a $10 donation from Sensetsu. Second floor basement, Psycho Mantis, Metal Gear. Gonna donate another $10 if my name is pronounced correctly. Fingers crossed. Cross, yeah, cross those fingers. <laughs> uh, we have a $15 donation from Loco. Just a box. Yeah, for all the box fans out there, unfortunately, we do not pick up the box during this run. Uh, it's actually slower, unfortunately. And right here, we're going to be uh, fighting the four horsemen, this elevative fight. And the strat is basically to aim super fast by uh, snapping to each target with B. And if we do it fast enough, we won't get kicked in the face, and that's what I'd like. Hold start and A there to get the codec immediately. So they say. No, I don't want oh. you to kick me. No. <laughs> go to bed. Go to bed. Go just go to bed. What's our count at now? <laughs> eight. Not eight? Okay. Eight. All right. Wait, nine. Is it, it's nine. All right. Ah. And coming into uh, the second wolf fight uh, has a little bit of luck to it, just like the first one. Uh, you don't want her to hug the trees, and preferably we want her to be on the right side because there's more room for her to run around over there. And I'll be aiming laterally, left to right, to try to uh, track her head. But you don't want to spam your shots because uh, I'm going to need some PSG1T ammo later for the next boss fight. So here we go. Fingers crossed. I it's sweet. okay to hug a tree in real life, but not in this game. No, we don't want her hugging any trees. Well, I can hug this tree. That's allowed, because I'm a big boss. Yep. Yeah. All right. You need to wait for the iframes. You can't, like, shoot immediately. Headshot. This is a terrible tree to hide behind, by the way. Okay. You can either predict if she's going to go either way or aim at the middle of the tree. Good. 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 But hey, I like nature too, but uh... Nice. nice. Yeah, the big uh, thing with that fight is knowing how she moves around the field, and then if you know that, you can already have your aim set up and down and just move left and right. But she can be a little bit tricky and do like a 180 turn and go the opposite way if she wants to. And coming into the Blast Furnace, uh, a little bit different in this game compared to the original. We will drop down from the rail. No need to deal with the stupid crane. We'll take some damage, but that's all right. It's to be expected. Roll over here. This is all one continuous area, so you want to be very careful not to get spotted here because they can't come into the pipe room. All right, standard. And pick up some M9 ammo for the next cargo fight. I'm gonna be uh, shooting some dudes in the face, typical stuff. But there is a fast strat if I get my inputs fast enough. Nice, I actually got nice. it. Nice. Good job. Thanks, man. So yeah, if you snap your targets fast enough, and punch in third person, you'll spin around to the guy behind you, and you can shoot him in the head before he shits, shoots you, 
and uh, that avoids some hit stun, saves like half a second. Uh, I discovered the punch strat, uh, but Blue Metal, another runner in this game, improved it with that third person punch. Uh, big shout outs to Blue uh, for all of his contributions to this game. Really, all the TTS community, the whole community has contributed to this run in various ways. Um, and really, the biggest contributor who deserves a lot of praise is Wall Guy, who is the father of uh, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes Extreme Speedrunning. Been running the game since it came out. Before, <laughs> when I was like in grade school, he was running this game. So huge shout outs to Wall Guy and all he's done for this game. Thanks, buddy. Woo! Now we're going to be going into Raven, and I will let Daly explain this fight. It's a little weird, but should go okay. So basically, in the original, you used an Aikida to shoot the Raven, but in this one, you want to go past the crate, just past it, and then you want to lay down and sit prone, get the sniper out, and just shoot um, Raven in the head. Yeah, it's a very particular spot I want to go prone, and it's something about being scoped and prone here that he has trouble hitting us. He's just going to scream! <laughs> Okay, good. Wait until you reload. Shoot. 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 One Go to more. sleep, man. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's how you pull ears. <laughs> yeah. It's a very weird fight because if the timing's a little bit off on your shots, he can actually run away, and then you have to set it up again on the opposite side. Do not try to do that fight with the M9. You are going to get hurt really bad. <laughs> So uh, I have a question. Does anyone know what a muck tuck eating competition is? I have no, no idea. I really don't know. I could not tell you. Hopefully Kojima did his research and that's actually a thing. Strat for this room is just run. Run fast. Don't worry about stuff. <laughs> and we're coming up to a place in the run where I might lose Big Boss. Uh, I'm going to be holding up a guard and killing him accidentally, according to the game. So uh, I'm going to focus here and hopefully get this strapped. Got to set up the movement properly. Freak. There we go. Nice. Perfect. Snake. He's fine. He's fine, guys. He's fine. <laughs> Gravity just pulled him down. Yeah, it was a complete accident. I didn't plan that. Um, the benefit of doing that strategy is that now that guy's gone and you deal with him really quickly, all these other shots for these guards to make him go to sleep are pretty set in place. And there's not a lot of adjustment I have to do, so really good that I didn't mess that up. If you mess that up by holding up too late, he'll turn around, and that's over. Game over. Yeah, I'm looking at you. There we go. And we're not actually going to leave this room because uh, everything we need is right here. We are going to be dropping down to a rope to blow up a rat that took our key card. Don't ask me. It's just Metal Gear Solid things. But uh, we don't want to mash too hard for this rope because there is a frame where if you're mashing on that frame, uh, the game kills you. So let's hopefully not do that. OK, we're good. If you miss that, you're dead. So very important. And cook the grenade, throw it, and blow up the rat. It didn't no. land on the water this time. Didn't land on the water, which is really good. Just make a quick turn, and that's that. In the original game, you have to deal with RNG for the rat. In this game, you just have to uh, safely drop down. So that is really nice. And now, what we're going to do is put this card in, and then freeze and warm this key. And on the opposite end of this room, 
are two pipes, one with liquid nitrogen and one with steam. And that is how we're going to freeze and warm the card key. In the original game, you have to do a huge backtrack sequence to do so. Go to the warehouse, come back, then go all the way to the blast furnace and come back. And that whole process takes like well over 10 minutes. Uh, another huge quality of life change for this game. So with that being said, uh, we have some time for donations while I do a few laps. All right, we have a $657 donation from the OBS team. KGDQ OBS team here. Always great to see what support class has cooked up each GDQ including the many bug reports we've had over the years, but they've really outdone themselves this time. Even running code from our upcoming version 22. What better place to test new features than during a marathon with over 100K viewers? We've always been big fans of the marathon, and it's amazing and humbling to know that we're helping power such an amazing cause. Thank you, OBS team. Thank you, OBS. Thanks, guys. I have a $25 donation from Nix238. Huge shootout to Plywood, the quickest disc swapper I've ever seen live. Good luck to him and all the runners. Thank you. Anyone want a 1v1 me disc swap? Hit me up. I'll see you in the practice room. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You don't want to walk on their bodies. It's too gross. Roll over them. It's faster. And I think I have the position for the third person shot here. Nice. So with the third person shot, it saves half a second. Yeah. If you can position yourself properly, you can just shoot, shoot the gun rather than go in first person. It's a nice little time save. And uh, just answering a call while we're on a rope, no big deal. No big deal. The calls are kind of awkwardly placed now. Uh, I don't know why these calls happen like 20 seconds within each other, guys. I have the card. Let's go put it in. I don't want to hear your life story, Naomi. I don't care about your turtleneck and whatever you're doing with your head there. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you got a couple donations, that was a good time. Absolutely. We have a $15 donation from Ubek. This Metal Gear run is absolutely surgical. Keep it up, Plywood. Thank you. There is a $10 donation from Johnny99. Hey, where did that prisoner who wouldn't shut up go? <laughs> That's a good question. Shut up in there, will ya? <laughs> we also have a $20 donation from Steampunk Q. Hello again, SGDQ. Donating again now that the wonderful Sakura is on the mic. Good luck with the run, Plywood. Pepsi Man hype. Hype. He takes off the sunglasses. I put them on. <laughs> Woo! So before we even get sealed in, we call our buddy Otacon for help. Thanks, buddy. And we're going to head out and confront Liquid Snake, who tricked us, bamboozled us into starting Metal Gear up. What a guy. And Metal Gear Rex, it's one of those fights where if things go right, it's very easy. But if Rex decides to troll us, it goes very wrong. Stand about right here. Time the shot. It's all in the timing. Right here, this missile should not hit us. You just have to know the invincibility frames here for when to shoot. Move a little bit up to avoid getting hit there. Another shot right there. And one more. Oh, the stupid hot, stupid head took the missile. That's a missed shot. Man. Another $10 for MSF. So coming up into Rex 2 after this guy 
rambles about Zanzibar land. Um, we're going to be literally standing still and just firing at our brother. It's very important here not to hit any other part of Rex. If that happens, we're going to have to play the fight normally, and that's a little bit scary. Stay with me, Couch. There you are. Huh? Ready? There you are. Oh. There you are! <laughs> I actually do use the voice line as an audio cue. Ooh, right in the face. Right, right. Nice. Good rest. And now for the Liquid Fist fight, and this is where the lottery roll comes into play. I'm going to try to get Liquid into a kitty corner so that he can't move left, can't get, go right, and roll in a precise angle to try to get uh, damage on every frame of the roll. It's very hard to do, and let's see if I can actually get it, and I'll let the couch explain the rest. So we're going to punch, punch, roll. Don't kick him there, because he'll get knocked off. Yeah, you do not want to knock him off. You want Liquid in that corner that he just passed by. All right, no lottery roll for us. Uh, it makes the most glorious sound. He just, like, screams on every frame. It's uh, push pretty him awesome. In that corner. Push him in that corner. Yep, push him in the corner. Get in there. And there now give him the punchers. Make some circles right here. Don't give me the bad pattern. Okay, he didn't. Now he's stuck in the corner, and I just make little baby circles. <laughs> What's wrong, man? One more. Done. <laughs> and uh, Otacon Codex showing that we saved Meryl here. Uh, I can't emphasize enough how hard that fight is compared to the original. In the original game, you can uh, do an infinite combo against Liquid. You kind of can do an infinite combo in this game, but it's not the same. Uh, and trying to get that perfect roll is really tough. I actually have it in my uh, personal best run, which is a 59-42 in-game time. But it's one of those things that you can set up, but you have to adjust very quickly. And uh, shout outs to this guy who really thinks he can shoot us. All right. Come on, man. We can do it. Get up with his puny little shield. He thinks this is Counter Strike. <laughs> you can't wall shot in Metal Gear Solid, doofus. Hey, I actually got damage boosted into the barrels. That's great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> So we're in the escape last section of the game. We're coming up to time. Um, big thing here is to make sure to shoot the barrels because you don't want to kill these guys. They do count as kills. And if you kill them, that's big boss gone. Sometimes they knock you off your aim. Strafe those guards. I can't move. What? Meryl. She wants you to get out and roundhouse kick him. Yeah, exactly. Shoot the barrels. Don't shoot this barrel too early because this guy needs to move in position. You shoot that barrel too early, he won't get blown up, and you have to kill the final card of the game. No good. And now the final Jeep section, the final encounter with uh, Liquid. Shoot immediately here and try to get shots off once he raises his gun. No earlier than that. So he aims at us, fan in, fan in, raises the gun, fan in, and then I try to do a third person shot here, get a transition shot, shoot the guy in his bare chest. It's Alaska, man, put on a coat. And just keep on shooting repeatedly. Wait until he raises the gun. Hey, man. Let's do that. There we go. 
And after two shots, we'll try to go for another transition shot here. When I say two, I mean three. By the way, all these bullets do not count as uh, me missing the shots. <laughs> I'm not trading my bank account. <laughs> Shoot him in his jeans right where it hurts. And if, you, and if he does it, notice how he shoots the gun through his armpit. Magical talents from our brother. And time is when the screen fades to white. Should be one more shot and time. And that, folks, is Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes. I am so happy to share this game with you. It's been several years since this game was shown at a GDQ, and a lot has changed. So uh, big shout-outs to the entire Metal Gear Solid speedrunning community, MGSR. Uh, shout-outs to Blue Metal, Erlian, the current world record holder for both categories in this game, Extreme and Normal. Tyler2022, Furry2, Wall Guy, uh, Kale Part for running this game years ago at GDQ, and my whole couch. What was the final total on bullets? 12. $120 for MSF from me. Thank you all for watching. We gonna get to see IGT at the end? Uh, no. no. No? No. But do enjoy the song. Thank you so much. And uh, if you want to learn this game or any other Metal Gear game, do check out our community, MGSR. We are always welcoming of new people. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks. And thank you so much to Plywood for that incredible run. Coming up next, we have The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures Any Percent Run by ZMaster91. But first, let's play a quick Twitch ad. And welcome back. You are watching Summer Games Done Quick 2018, powered by Twitch. Again, up next, The Legend of Zelda, Four Swords Adventures, run by Z Master. We have an update on the bonus game, Pepsi Man. It's currently sitting at 16,279.77 cents out of 45,000. So almost halfway there, and you're definitely, definitely going to want to be seeing this. And speaking of some Pepsi Man, we have a few donations, actually. We have a $50 donation from Ari Stronger. 
We need to see the best game ever. Pepsi Man forever. We have a $100 donation from Liquid Egg Product 162. Pepsi Man may not be the hero we deserve, but he is the hero we need. Please help. We need Pepsi Man's power for the good of all humanity. We also have a $50 donation from Grogfella240. Can't wait for the Pepsi Man reboot. We have a $25 donation from Anonymous. Thank goodness you're here, Pepsi Man. We've been running a charity event to benefit Doctors Without Borders, and people have been speedrunning games for days with absolutely no soda-based entertainment to be found. Without any Pepsi-based games, people are starting to get tired and might not have enough energy to PB. You've got to help them. We also have a $150 donation from Max Res Default 2. I have a thirst that only Pepsi Man can quench. We have a $20 donation from Sleepy Endymion. Great event, great game, great host. Roll Tide. Donation to Reader's Choice. We have an anonymous $200 donation. My sister was obsessed with Pepsi Girl ads 20 years ago, and now I'm obsessed with Pepsi Man. We have a $5 donation from Brycey59. Come on, guys, there's like 100,000 of us in chat. If each of us put in five bucks, not only do we get Pepsi Man, we almost double the total. And we have a $250 donation from Fast B. Pepsi Man!
We have a $150 donation from Shan Saman. What an amazing charity and an amazing drive. Good luck to all the runners. We have a $25 donation from Strandu, donating for this Zelda run and the Majora's run that I fell asleep for. Love everyone and everything this event does. Keep up the good work, and remember, don't hit the Cocos. We have a $25 donation from Maddie Bo. Don't tell Pepsi Man that I prefer Coke products. We have an anonymous $5 donation. Hello from Italy, SGDQ. First time donor, and I'm so happy to be finally able to do my part for this event that got me into speedrunning. Thank you to all the staff and the runners for this amazing event. And my money goes to inviting Luigi to the party. He deserves so much better. So speaking of incentives, we actually have an incentive that's fairly close to being met. Paper Mario Glitch Exhibition is only $2,000 away from being met. It is currently at $13,076.26 out of $15,000. We also have a $5 donation from Exit134. I love this game as a kid, but was never able to finish it. I can't wait to see it ran.